Gel electrophoresis part one. Gel electrophoresis is when we separate proteins based on their size. And proteins, we actually put them in a gel that is clear and it looks and feels solid, but it's actually porous, has tiny little holes in it that the proteins can go through when they're mixed with a chemical called SDS that makes them negatively charged. And when we add electricity in a chamber, the proteins all sink to the positive end. They sink down to the bottom of our chamber. And then we can visualize how big the proteins are. The proteins are blue in this old gel as an example. And we also have a 3D print of what a gel example looks like so you can feel it as well. Do you want to come touch these, Emmy? Sure. So you want to touch the real gel. Okay. So that is here. How would you describe that? Like really thin? Yes. Kind of like jello? No, like thinner. Thinner than, thinner than gel. It's kind of like, it's like thicker than paper. Yeah, but it's super just stringy. It's kind of breakable too. Like it's but fragile. It's, yeah, fragile. And right now it's sitting in water just to keep it hydrated. It's very smooth, even though it's super porous. Yeah, like the pores. So the pores are really tiny. Like so, we can't even like see or feel them. It's just so smooth and thin. Yeah, do just wanna, layer of stuff. Do you want to check out the print? Sure. Thank you. So could you describe for our viewers what I'm looking at? Yeah, so this is a photo of a gel that I did in the past that I converted onto a 3D printer and printed it out. It's a rectangle and the pieces that poke up represent the intensity of the bands on the gel. So it was like the blue bands I was showing on the original gel. And there's 10 lanes. On the left side, it's called the ladder. It's markers for known molecular weights or sizes of proteins. And as we go through each lane, we're showing one purification process, but all the different stages. And each stage, we're trying to improve the purity of our sample. We only want to really have this one band at a certain molecular weight because that's our protein of interest. We want to get rid of all the junk proteins. So as you move from left to right, you can feel that the junk bands start to go away and the band of interest gets bigger and bigger. That's what this is. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, so you can use this to gauge your results. Exactly, and it's really easy. You can just convert it with a grayscale image on a lot of 3D printers. Yes, there are lots of websites to do this and we can link them in the description box below. Awesome. Electrophoresis part two. Let's check out the tactile markings we put on the power supply. Would you like me to take you from here? Yeah. Alrighty, so first thing you gotta do is power on a machine. So that's where we're gonna start. So to turn it on, there's a side of the switch that has a bump dot and the other side doesn't. So if your switch is pointing towards the side with the bump dot, you know it's on. So there's that. We have a min and max for minimum and maximum label on the dial. So there's also another switch. We put a braille label on the left side that says low. And of course we put one on the right side that says high. And we have an M for milliamp and V for volts. And that is to change your modes. Is there anything else that should be discussed about this setup, Caroline? Well, we got the bump dots for the positive and negative ends. Explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, so it's really important that we line up all of our cords, since this is running with electricity, that the positives are with the positive and negatives with negative. Otherwise, it won't work. So we just put bump dots on the positive end so we can match those up. There's bump dots on the holes to put the prongs in for a positive. There's a bump dot on the prong, the positive prong, as well as for our chamber and gasket, 
we have bump dots so that way when you put it inside the chamber the gasket inside the chamber it will line up and when you put the lid on there's a bump dot for the side of the chamber that's the positive side to line up with our positive prong awesome would you like to see this in action yes brilliant Stay positive, my friends. Oh, I think you had to pull it up a little bit. It's not all the way in there. It's just kind of wedged in the wrong spot. There we go. I think that that's the right area. Got it. Gel loading guide practice. Gel electrophoresis part four. Let's show the loading guide and how it matches up with the wells. Totally. So, what value do we need? 10 microliters. All right, while, you, while I find that, why don't you explain to our viewers what I am doing here? Yeah. So, Emmy is filling the four different fixed volume micropipettes for the Braille label that says 10 microliters. And then she's going to get a tip from the tip box to attach to the end and then get 10 microliters from our blue SDS page die with a braille label that says dark blue. It's a laundry tag metal label. And then it's gonna deposit that in the second well on our gel. The SDS loading die has a chemical called BME in it, and it smells bad. <laughs> so just close that cap. <sighs> oh. And then you can feel the gaps in the loading guide for the second lane. And then stick the tip in and wedge it in between the two glass plates and angle it a bit too so it is in the right area. You got it, Emmy. And slowly depress the pipette button. Let's see if the blue dye came out in the right spot. Yay! You did! Awesome! Now we have three loaded lanes. Yay!